Today I'm going to look at a thermal label printer. It's a 4 inch model, which means it's a 4 inch maximum width you could put in the printer. It's the Zebra LP2844. This is a direct thermal label printer where it doesn't have a extra spool where to keep the um, where it keeps like a toner cartridge where it, it prints on. So this is just like a direct um, thermal printer so there's no toner cartridge extra on it. I'm going to do a brief teardown of it too, just look what's inside. Right here there's a multifunction button which turns different colors depending on what, what mode the printer is in. The uh, green means it's it's uh, everything's functional and then there's amber and then there's red and those are both error air modes on the printer. This top cover has got a, um, it's like a really opaque kind of see-through, it's like a dark, it's like a smoke colored acrylic. It's that's so to keep, if it's in direct sunlight, it doesn't activate these labels because if sunlight's hitting these labels directly, it will over time darken them, which would ruin, ruin the labels on the front right there. So that's a pretty good, ni nice little touch right there. And then on the back, We've just got a DC jack on off switch. It's got a USB port, it's got a parallel port, and it's also got a serial port on it. And today we'll just use the USB because that's the most modern type of port. I think it's a USB 1.1 too. It's it's not like the most up to date printer on the market, but it's pretty cheap and it's it's pretty rugged. Okay, let's take this let's unlatch this cover, so you pull the back on those two things, it opens up. And I've got uh, one and a half inch by 0 0.5 inch labels in here right now. It's a nice, uh, nice roll I've got in there. I like this uh, form, I like these uh, label size because I can, you can stick these on the component cabinets to make nice, really, really nice labels to label all your parts on. So what I've got here is I just printed off a whole bunch of different kind of labels for the, for the shelves. And it's a pretty nice, neat, organized way to, to organize your component shelves. So what you do if you just want to remove the, the label roll is just unlatch that and then just take out that. Which I'll just set this aside. So this thing actually holds the labels. It's got some sort of mechanical thing in, on there. So this is uh, up to four inches. So it's pretty good for, it's, it's, you can ship, you can print shipping labels with it too. And on the top, we see the actual thermal label head right here. So this contains really tiny heating elements on there, which heat up really quickly to um, activate the whatever chemistry they've got on the labels themselves. I've actually looked under this under like a really high magnification microscope, like 100x. I could just I could just barely see the actual dots where they heated up. You could kind of see in the stainless steel where the each pixel was. And this is a, a 203 a DPI printer, which isn't the greatest quality, but for shipping and just for general labels, it's perfect. You, there's uh, higher ones out in the market like 300 DPI and uh, 600 DPI, but I believe they're much more expensive than the 203 dpi this printer is. This printer also features uh, automatic um, detection of uh, label gaps. So I'm just going to put this back in again just to demonstrate that. So there's different kind of light sensors on here. There's a photo, uh, I think they're IR 
can see this one a little better, but there's a, a transmitter and there's a receiver. Looks like the, or e either either way, but one of them is going to be either transmitting IR and one's going to be receiving IR. That's to, just to detect when the label slides over, it'll know if there's a label there or not. And I think this one in the back is for calibration purposes, which it can sense the gaps in between each label so it can get the right so I'll know when to start printing the, the text and the label. So the one in the bottom right here. And then there's a matching one right there, which can which sees through the label. It sees right through the label, so you can detect when there's a gap or, or there's a label there. That's pretty nice. Then I'll know You'll know if there's a skip label too, like if a label is removed here, it would know that there's nothing there. So it, it uh, I, th I think that happened before, and it I'll put an error code that oh, that's there's a missing label on there. There up here is just a motor, a roller to automatically feed the labels once it engages. Let's figure out how to take this thing apart. like there's four screws in the back, four Phillips screws, and two are missing, right? Two are missing, which is kind of odd. But there's, oh, there's one more way down there. It's recessed. There's five screws in total. That's not too bad. Uh, I don't think there's going to be much interesting stuff on this board, but just to get a look what's inside, what the quality is. I expect it to be pretty high quality since this wasn't a super cheap printer in the day. There's the self-tapping screws expected. And it should just pop right off, hopefully. Might need to... Oh, there you go. The whole thing just pops right off. Unhinge it. There we go. Click on the inside cover. We've got a date code. November 2004. It's quite an old printer. Okay, we've got a single single side board right there, single component load board. And it looks like we've got a separate motor right here. It's a Mitsumi 7.5 degree step motor. And that's probably for driving the, the, the um, roller on there to, to uh, advance the labels. Looks like we've got some single screw to hold this in. Let me go let's lift this board up. Hopefully uh, do undo con connections on it, I think. But, okay, well down here I guess there's the board for the opto sensors and another board right here, probably the open door sensor right there. Hard to wiggle these connectors out quickly. Here's the board. Looks pretty nice. It's all service mount almost, except for some of the um, passive components. Okay, it looks like this. This is a power switch right here. Looks like it's from that that C and K. Nope, that's for a Sailcom power switch. I haven't heard of them, but it's got that red, that red C and K switch look on it. Let's start at the. Okay, I guess this is the. It's the DC jack right there, the USB port, parallel port, and the serial port right there. I guess we can start with the power side. Looks like this is a. Zebra logo right there. It's pretty nice on the silk screen pretty detailed. So this is a VH31340 63. Uh, I'm not sure what that is, but it might be something for the power, maybe like a switch mode controller. Depending, judging on the ductor right there, it might be a switch mode, um, some sort of switch mode thing. I guess 
yeah, that inductor kind of gives it away right there. And then you've got some big, some bulk capacitors right there, which are 1,000 microfarad each at 25 volts. N, NZ, I'm not sure what that is. And those are 85 degree C rated capacitors. Which is, I mean, it shouldn't get too hot in there. But those capacitors look still look good. So nice quality capacitors, they lasted so long. Uh, it looks like the power components right there. You've got some some sort of RAM or flash down there. Uh, Cypress and Atmel, uh, two different kinds. It's kind of weird. Uh, I wonder if one's like a RAM and one's and one's flash. Gotten some unpopulated stuff for different options. Apparently, you can get higher memory capacity boards, maybe or like a print server or something. And then you've got, like, it looks like some sort of old school type packages right there. Take a look at this chip. It's probably a parallel interface chip. It's uh, probably totally obsolete now. USB N9604-28M. Uh, that's probably the USB, since it says USB right in the, in the part number. Got a nice little crystal right by it. Let's see, you've got some just some some logic chips. Looks like HC CMOS CMOS logic. There, some other miscellaneous stuff. STE two zero two EC. So probably something to do with either the serial or something else. Right there is a, looks like a M3772-1S2BFR. It looks like some sort of microcontroller chip. And I got an iXilinx, some sort of FPGA type deal. That's probably to drive the actual um, the pixels on each one since it needs to be pretty fast. It's probably all all done in that hardware level right there. And it's the XC9572 XL. What we've got down here is probably some sort of motor controller. I'm guessing just in the proximity of the some sort of motor windings. So ST part number it's so L six two zero seven D, and then down here we just got some uh, miscellaneous logic. What's inside of the board? So let's turn the thing on and just print out some labels pretty quick, just to show the how fast it prints. I guess what we've got down here is the that mechanism to to load and unload different rolls of labels. Oh, look at that, we got a nice little ferrite ring on the wires. These are probably pretty high speed. These are going to the label label head. That's pretty nice. I can't figure out which, which wire goes where. These uh, connections are they're exactly the same right here, and I didn't check which one goes where when I took it apart, so. Uh, I might have to look at the service manual if there is one on here, just to figure it out. And if not, I'll just hook. I'll just try it one way. Hopefully, I got the the right way around, or else it'll probably do like some sort of error code on there, just to tell me that it's the wrong way around, or it wouldn't operate correctly. Yeah, the, I'm guessing that this. Oh yeah, this one's a little longer too. So this one must go to the label taken, since it's the farthest away. And it's also on the front. So I don't know, let's just try it this way and see. There we go. Oh. Just know this this date code up here. It says uh, February two thousand eight. 
So this bottom piece was manufactured in 2004. This piece up here is made in 2008. That's kind of interesting. I wonder why that is. I think they'd be pretty close when it was manufactured. I wonder if they just manufactured a ton of these old, these bottom sections. Maybe this is remanufactured at one point too. There we go, it's all put back together now. Let's load up some labels on it. It's pretty easy. And if we were putting a new batch of labels, then you do a one of the calibrations on it. But since this is in here already and it's already in the calibration, we don't need to. To do the calibration, you you hold down this button right here while you turn on the printer, and then release it. And then it would uh, automatically draw a little bit and then figure out where where the labels are and where they aren't based on the light readings it gets. That's pretty cool. It takes uh, 20 volts at, and it's 2.5 amp charger. Let's try to switch it on. See the might be able to see the green light on there, but it's all operational right now. Okay, the USB is plugged in, and the green light is on, so we can print something. So I'm going to just go over the computer and do that. Um, what I'm using to print the labels with is uh, LaTeX. I'm using a uh, custom page size that's one and a half inches width and 0 0.5 inches tall and then I've just uh, formatted some text on there. It's pretty pretty simple. A lot there's other label printers that are label programs that are more chancy but this is just a really easy way to do it. It's just a couple lines of the code and I'll post the code at weelectronics.net. Okay I've got the uh, computer setup right here. It's running the Tech Studio right now. I've got the I've got the geometry package on there. I'm setting the paper height and paper width to one and a half width to 0 0.5 inches height, and then that just creates uh, pretty nice PDF files for each one. So let's just render that, and you can see. See each each label down the list right there. So this is just one of the project, but I'll just print out and probably just stick the three or four labels just to just to do that. Um, just to demonstrate the label printer. So there's the label printer right here. Let me just print out a few. And uh, that's out to another window. And okay, to install the Zebra printer, it's not, it's a little bit tricky, but not, not a ton. Um, I can just go through the installation quick, installation steps pretty quick on this computer. So you go over to the settings on your computer and I'm using Linux right now, but the Windows setup is probably slightly easier. Linux Mint right now. So when you plug in the printer, it's not going to show up in the list, but you have to add, select Add Printer, and it's going to search search around for the printer. You're going to select the Zebra LP2844, and then you select a driver from the list, and it conveniently has one right there. And if it's like the EPL2 label printer driver, EPL2 is like a programming language where you can program the printer. But the, anything you're doing on this computer is it's it's just going to uh, automate the process of sending commands over. 
and then you just hit next and then you finish but I've already I've already set it up so I'll just click cancel and let's just print out some labels pretty quick and you see, check through the settings see if it's the right the right paper size and it, it is and yep everything looks right so I'm just gonna print off a few just print off I don't know enough three labels or something three four okay and let's hit print there we go and it's just printed off so let's tear it up tear them off looks like it's it missed the this top one right here um, Sometimes that happens, but eh, not not very often. I've also um, took all the labels and stuff too, so it probably wasn't um, too calibrated in a way, so I can stick that and stuff. And yeah, it's all good. So that was just a quick look at the, the Zebra LP2844 direct thermal label printer. It's a great printer for uh, general lab use, where you can just label different component cabinets can label different parts or different wires on a on a on a prototype. Which will be, it's going to come in handy for the lab, and also we can use it to print out the shipping labels on it too. So that's another. It's pretty versatile printer.